हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा सो डियर डिवोटिस देर आर फोर वर्सेस सो लेट्स रीड देम अनुचरई समनुवर्णित वीर आदि पुरुष इवाचल भूति वनचरो गिरी तटेशु चरंतीर वेणुना वयती गाह स यदा वनलता स्तरव आत्मनी विष्णु व्यंजय इव पुष्प फलादया प्रणत भार विटपा मधुधारा प्रेम हृष्ट तनवो वृषु स्म दर्शनीय तिलको वनमाला दिव्य गंध तुलसी मधुम अलिकुलैर अलघु गीता अभीष्ट आद्रियन यरि संधित वेणु सरसी सारस हंस विहंगाश चारु गीता हित चेत हरि उपासत यतचिता अंत मिलित दृशो धृत मौना ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय द हम्बल डिसाइपल्स ऑफ आवर बिलवेड फाउंडर आचार्य हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस अभय चरण अरविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपात शिल प्रभुपात की जय ट्रांसलेशन इज ब्यूटिफुल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ कृष्णा कृष्णा moves about the forest in the company of his friends who vividly chant the glories of his magnificent deeds the spiritual world my dear friends at the bhakti center the spiritual world is not a place where the lord almighty is alone the spiritual world is a place where the supreme lord is always enjoying very sweet relationships with his devotees specifically in golok vrindavan the relationship is extremely uh, informal it is devoid of awe and reverence for the supreme lord in golok vrindavan love for god is so condensed and so deep that the devotee naturally forgets the godhood of the supreme lord there is so much there is so much prem so much love for the supreme lord that the devotee only remembers his or her personal relationship with krishna for example let's say someone is the president of the united states of america but the president's son or daughter will always consider their father or if it's a female president the mother as their parent first and then the president of the country when they are having dinner at home when they are playing uh, some board game monopoly or as a parent first and then okay he may be president that's official business that's in office but at home he's my dad or she's my mom golok vrindavan is like the inner quarters of the white house <laughs> where there is no official business there is only personal family relationships his grace jananivas prabhu the head priest of iskon navadvip mayapur dham he very famously once said in a class that golok vrindavan the spiritual world is nothing but family life <laughs> it's just family life everyone has a personal relationship with krishna and krishna is not treated as god krishna is not treated as the 
source of everything, the creator, the maintainer, the destroyer of the whole world. No. Krishna is mine. Krishna is my friend. Krishna is my lover. Krishna is my child. That is the um, predominant feeling in Vrindavan. So just like we go on picnics, just like we go on hikes, just like we go on vacations, the spiritual world every day is a vacation. There are six seasons in the spiritual world. <laughs> there is summer. Then there is the autumn season. There is the monsoon season. There is pre-winter. There is winter. And there is fall. Uh, and there is spring. So even here in our country, we have four seasons. We have summer, fall, winter, and spring. In the spiritual world, there is pre-winter and there is a specific monsoon season. It doesn't rain any time of the year. It rains in a specific season called monsoon season. And in the spiritual world, there are 12 forests, main forests. Dwadasha Kanana. There are 12 main forests in Golok Vrindavan, the spiritual world. And there are other sub forests also. So 12 main forests and six seasons. And Radha and Krishna, Radha Murlidhar, wander through all the uh, 12 forests every single day. And they enjoy different seasons, all the six seasons in these 12 forests every day. And Vrinda Devi arranges that. Every day, Radha and Krishna enjoy winter. Every day, they enjoy spring. They enjoy summer. They enjoy uh, autumn. They enjoy monsoon. They enjoy pre-winter. Every single day, in different, different forests, different landscape, different scenery, they enjoy, along with all the devotees. This is the spiritual world. So Krishna has his Ashtakaliya Leela, his eightfold daily pastimes, Radha and Krishna, every single day in Golopurandavan, in the spiritual world. The day is divided into eight phases, each phase of three hours. And they have different activities. It keeps changing every day. It is said, please, um, you, you will love this fact. It is said that in the spiritual world, not one food preparation has been repeated since time immemorial. Every day Radharani cooks for Krishna. Every day Radharani cooks for her Murlidhar. And in that Divya kitchen, in that divine kitchen of Golok Vrindavan, not one food preparation has been repeated. Every day, every time, every meal, the Manjaris, the Gopis, Srimati Radharani, they cook different, different um, preparations for the enjoyment of Krishna and all the devotees. Every day is a festival. Every day is a picnic. Every day is a vacation. Eternally. Hari Bol. This is the spiritual world. And this is what Srila Prabhupada came to invite us to. The eternal, transcendental vacation. In the most exotic location. Here when we go on vacation, let's go to Hawaii. In Hawaii, we can only enjoy tropical weather. Let's go to Alaska. There you can enjoy only a specific landscape. Let's go to South America. Let's go to Iceland. Let's go to so many, there are places, um, Australia, New Zealand. But you can enjoy a specific landscape, a specific weather, a specific experience there. But in the spiritual world, Radha and Krishna experience Every season, every landscape, there are mountains, there are rainforests, there are plains, there are villages, there is river, there is valley, there is lake. Everything is there in the spirit. There are waterfalls. <laughs> Everything is there existing in its pure, unpolluted, uncontaminated form only to give pleasure to Radha Krishna and their pure devotees. This entire world, material world, this earth planet, the sun, the moon, 
the different planets, the stars, the four seasons here, the different species of life, the DNA, the retina of the eye, the human brain, the different fruits with their flavors, the different flowers with their fragrance. Everything has been created. There is a creator. So just imagine, just for a second, close your eyes and imagine someone who can create the creator of the DNA. Lord Brahma created the DNA. Lord Brahma created the genome for all species. And that's why we can reproduce, we can grow, we can maintain the species are being maintained. There is ecological perfect balance until the human being comes and messes up everything. <laughs> There's perfect balance in this world. Lord Brahma has created it. So if Lord Brahma is so intelligent to create everything so perfectly, so organically, there is a water cycle, there is a food cycle, everything is perfect. It's complete in itself. It's self-sustaining. We cannot create a machine. Human beings cannot create a Tesla that can produce more Teslas. We cannot create a Lamborghini that can create more Lamborghini without causing any pollution. But Lord Brahma has created these species and we can reproduce without causing any pollution. Just organically, we can reproduce. We grow. As soon as the child is born, there is breast milk. Before that, there is no breast milk. And after the child completes lactation and starts eating regular food, the milk production stops. Just a small example, how wonderfully Lord Brahma has created the different species of life. Can you imagine? It's so beautiful. One who has created the creator of this world, the creator of Lord Brahma, Lord Krishna, Lord Brahma himself says, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadira Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. Oh Krishna, you are the cause of all causes. So if Lord Brahma is so great, Krishna is the creator of millions of such Brahmas. In every Brahmanda, in every universe, there is a Brahma. And the creator is Lord Krishna. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is a story where all the Brahmas come to offer obeisances to Krishna. So if Brahmaji can be so intelligent, if Brahmaji's abode, Brahma Lok, is so wonderful that there is practically no disease there, there is no hospital there, there is no primary care physician, there is no annual checkups, nothing in Brahma Lok. Nobody falls sick there. Nobody ages. There is no geriatrics there. <laughs> there is no gerontology in Brahma Lok. If Lord Brahma is so great, if Lord Brahma's abode is so pure and perfect, almost perfect, even though it is temporary, you can imagine how perfect the home of the creator of Brahma is. One who has created millions of Brahmas. And that's just one fourth of his manifestation. <laughs> Ek pad. And three pad, three fourth is the spiritual world. So imagine how great Krishna's abode is. So one should not doubt that in Krishna's abode, all the six seasons manifest every day in different forests. And Vrinda Devi makes tasteful, wonderful arrangements every moment for the enjoyment of Radha Murlidhar. This is the spiritual world. So as part of the Ashtakalya Leela, the eightfold daily pastimes of Radha and Krishna, there is a pastime where Krishna goes with his friends, cow herding, deep into the Vrindavan forests. And they enjoy so many uh, wonderful pastimes in the forest. So Krishna moves about the forest, not alone, never alone, in the company of his friends. And what are the friends doing? They are chanting the wonderful activities of Krishna, magnificent deeds of Krishna, Krishna Katha. Krishna thus appears just like the Supreme Personality of Godhead exhibiting his inexhaustible opulences. Our opulences, our glory, our assets, our infrastructure is very limited. <laughs> very limited. But Krishna's is inexhaustible. It is unending. When the cows wander onto the mountain sides and Krishna calls out to them with the sound of his flute, Venu Geet, the trees and creepers in the forest respond by becoming so luxuriant with fruits and flowers that they seem to be manifesting Lord Vishnu within their hearts. <laughs> 
simply the call of krishna through his flute completely intoxicates and enchants all the devotees in golok vrindavan including the trees the trees start bending down and offering their beautiful fragrant juicy sweet tasty fruits to krishna and his friends the plants bow down and they offer their beautiful soft fragrant fresh blooming flowers to krishna the mountains start melting the river becomes stunned and stops moving the moving become non moving the non moving become moving just by listening to krishna's flute song it's so beautiful as their branches bend low with the weight the filaments on their trunks and vines stand erect out of ecstasy of love of god this is a little homework for all of us today i hope all of us have the holy tulsi plant at home if not you can go to the bhakti center and there is a tulsi plant the homework is go to the tulsi plant and look at the twigs of the holy tulsi plant and on the twigs of the tulsi plant if you look closely you will see fine hair which are standing erect like we get goosebumps like that and this is because tulsi devi is always in touch with the lotus feet of radha murli dhar and therefore she is in ecstasy she's in ecstasy her hair is standing on end she's got goosebumps in spiritual ecstasy that's what is being described and both the trees and the creepers pour down a rain of sweet sap there is a very beautiful beverage not available in this material world called varuni this varuni juice it's a very intoxicating sweet beverage that is released from the trunks of the trees in the spiritual world and krishna balram krishna and his friends they drink and enjoy this varuni beverage it's very good for spiritual health it intoxicates not in not like the intoxicants of this world not like the weed or the alcohol or the tobacco that is just a perverted um unhealthy reflection of the divine spiritual intoxication that exists in its pure form in the spiritual world this intoxication makes one intoxicated with love of god hari bol the best intoxicant love of god krishna prem by drinking this varuni juice it increases one's love for krishna it increases one's spiritual ecstasy and one is swooning in utter intoxication love of god it doesn't cause bronchitis or smoker's cough or alcoholic hepatitis no this is pure transcendental spiritual juice called varuni in fact varuni is the wife of lord balram one of the two wives of lord balram so she increases krishna prem so the trees offer this sweet sap varuni to krishna and balram the gopis are describing this maddened by the divine honey like aroma of the tulsi flowers tulsi flowers means the tulsi manjaris the inflorescence the honey like aroma of the tulsi flowers on the garland krishna wears murlidhar wears a garland of tulsi manjaris and tulsi leaves swarms of bees sing loudly for krishna and balram mm-hmm. hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari hari ram 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 hari hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari hari ram hari ram 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 hari hari like that the honey bees are not just doing boom they are doing their own kirtan hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 they are chanting the names of krishna and ram and radha rani <laughs> the honey bees seeking the honey they are buzzing around the tulsi garland of krishna singing their own kirtan and that most beautiful of all persons krishna thankfully acknowledges and acclaims their song by taking his flute to his lips and playing it for them this is spiritual world the honey bees are doing their bzz, their kirtan and krishna doesn't say what is this bzz? i want some mridanga i want some kartal i want some harmonium no krishna appreciates the bzz music of the honey bees because krishna understands all languages hari bol 
we should not think that oh i do not know sanskrit i do not know bengali krishna doesn't care about sanskrit and bengali these are material languages krishna understands every language you can express your heart in english george harrison of the beatles my sweet lord he wrote a beautiful song my sweet lord i really want to see you i really want to feel you i really want to be with you and shri prabhupad accepted that song as a very heartful offering one can play guitar one can play any instrument one can speak any language one can pray to krishna in any language one can write poetry one can write offerings in any language one of the 64 qualities of krishna shila rupa goswami describes is krishna knows all the languages he knows the language of the dolphins he knows the language of the birds he knows the language of the honey bees the honey bees are doing their own kirtan and krishna is gratefully acknowledging it this is our sweet lord he acknowledges us he loves us the just the way we are we don't have to try to be like anyone else we can be ourselves and krishna will love us for what we are for who we are he is appreciating the song of the bees who in this world appreciates the song of the bees have we ever done that no krishna appreciates the song of the bees so beautiful and that most beautiful of all persons thankfully acknowledges and acclaims their song hari bol he glorifies their song and then he reciprocates how by playing his own song for them krishna is playing the flute for the honey bees hari bol this is so beautiful the honey bees are offering their song to krishna krishna accepts that gift and then he gives them a gift dadati prati grihati spiritual life shila rupa goswami explains means receiving spiritual gifts and offering spiritual gifts krishna is offering his gift to the honey bees by playing a song for them his flute song the charming flute song then steals away the minds of not just the honey bees but the minds of the cranes the swans and the other lake dwelling birds the honey bees are drinking nectar from the lotuses that that grow in the lakes and in the yamuna when krishna goes the bees honey bees abandon everything and they, bzzz, they start buzzing around the flower garland and the tulasi garland of krishna murlidhar sham sundar and then krishna plays the flute for the honey bees but the lotuses the cranes the swans the birds that dwell in that lake they also benefit and they also are completely charmed by krishna's venu geet krishna's flute song indeed they all approach krishna close their eyes and maintaining strict silence worship krishna by fixing their consciousness upon him in deep meditation they come and they just drink the beauty of krishna's form krishna's vision with their eyes with their nose they drink the fragrance of krishna's body which is like a mixture of sandalwood camphor musk and aguru which is a type of aloe plant very fragrant plant with their nose they are relishing the fragrance of krishna with their eyes they are drinking the beauty of krishna's form and they go completely in samadhi in deep fixed meditation on krishna on murlidhar who is playing his flute for their pleasure hari bol for port shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur has made several illuminating comments on these verses he gives the analogy that just as when householder vaishnavas hear a sankirtan party approaching their home they become ecstatic and offer obeisances so the trees and creepers in vrindavan become ecstatic when they heard krishna's flute and bowed low with their branches and vines how beautiful the word darshaniya tilaka in text 10 indicates not only that lord krishna is the most excellent to see but also that he decorated himself with attractive reddish tilak taken from the mineral rich earth of vrindavan forest vrindavan dham ki jai natural tilak comes from the earth different colored minerals reddish tilak and krishna puts it 
when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Radha Kund, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took Radha Kund mud and applied it to Lak. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur also points out that Tulasi, although exalted in many ways, is not normally considered an especially fragrant plant. You go to Home Depot or you go to some nursery, they will not have the Tulsi plant. They will have so many different uh, flowers and so many different plants that people pay money and buy. But you will not get Tulsi there. Because they don't know the value of Tulsi, the spiritual value of Tulsi. Nor do they appreciate the divine fragrance of Tulsi. But in Bhakti Center, which is a spiritual world, you have Tulsi. However, early in the morning, Tulsi emits a transcendental fragrance that ordinary people cannot perceive, but that transcendental personalities fully appreciate. Takes one to know one. Tulsi is transcendental. It takes a transcendental person to appreciate the value of Tulsi. The bees who are privileged to swarm around the flower garlands worn by the Supreme Personality of God at Muralidhar, the bees certainly appreciate this fragrance. And Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur quotes from Srimad Bhagavatam 3.15.19 to the effect that the most fragrant plants in the spiritual world in Vaikuntha also appreciate the special qualifications of Sri Tulasi Devi. Sri Tulasi Devi ki jai. The word Sandhita Venu in text 10 indicates that Lord Krishna placed his flute firmly upon his lips. And the melody emanating from that flute is certainly the most enchanting of sounds as the gopis describe in this chapter. The sound of Krishna's flute, the divine song of Krishna's flute is, is the most um, enchanting sound available to the ears. Adharam madhuram, venum madhura. The lips of Krishna are sweetest and therefore when the lips of Krishna touch his flute and the beautiful flute sound manifests, that flute sound, Venugit, is the most wonderful, most heart-melting, love-evoking sounds in the entire creation. Hare Krishna. So I'll stop here. Grandhara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada who gifted us Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Dada Prabhu, thank you so much. Wonderful class. Uh, do we have any questions for Aditya Dada Prabhu? Uh, anyone curious about how spiritual world works? I think that our Prabhu is the right devotee for the job. If not, I have a question. I have a question. Can I can I ask? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Okay, so how um how can there be enjoyment in the spiritual world uh, when there's no suffering there? Because in the material world we suffer and then when we're temporarily free from suffering, that's enjoyment here. So how yeah. can there be enjoyment in the spiritual world if there's nothing to compare it to? And uh, also, uh, is there any preaching going on in the spiritual world? Uh, apparently, there is no forgetfulness of Krishna. There is no um, resistance to Krishna consciousness in the spiritual world. How can there be preaching? And how can there be devotional service and surrender in the spiritual world where there is no obstacles? Those are the two Hare. questions. Very... Wonderful, sweet question, Prabhuji. So many thoughts are coming to the mind by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. So, how can there be happiness in the spiritual world when there is no distress? So, this is the material world where it is a world of dualities. In the material world, there is good health and then there is disease. And because we have experience of disease, we really appreciate good health. In the spiritual world, there is work week. And therefore, there is, thank God, it's Friday. <laughs> These are the dualities of the world. In this material world, there is honor and there is dishonor. In this material world, there is success and failure. There is sorrow and there is happiness. These are the dualities of the material world. This is the hallmark of the material world, dualities. But the spiritual world, 
is advayam it is non dual vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yadnyanam advayam ब्रह्मेति परमात्मेति भगवान इति शब्दते श्रीमद् भागवतम डिस्क्राइब्स दैट द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड ऑफ सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज अद्वयम ही इज नॉट ड्यूअल दिस ड्यूअलिटीज डू नॉट एग्जिस्ट देयर द्वंद्व डजंट एग्जिस्ट देयर ते द्वंद्व मोह निर्मुक्ता भजते माम दृढ व्रता द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ इज फ्री फ्रॉम ड्यूअलिटीज इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड वी नीड द नेगेटिव एक्सपीरियंस टू एप्रिशिएट द पॉजिटिव एक्सपीरियंस but in the spiritual world that doesn't need to exist because it's a whole different realm whole different dimension at all uh, altogether in the material world yes we need suffering to appreciate good health we need sorrow to appreciate happiness we need uh, bad relationships to appreciate good relationships we need ill treatment to appreciate love and good treatment but these are dualities and they hold true in this world of duality but the spiritual world is beyond dualities it's a whole different dimension there is no need of suffering there and we don't need suffering over there to appreciate happiness because there is no happiness in the spiritual world there is no enjoyment in the spiritual world there is only bliss there is only ecstasy so this is first second um is there any preaching in the spiritual world answer is mm, no there is no preaching as we know uh, the preaching that we understand where someone is uh, not knowing about god someone is ignorant about their spiritual nature and we go and we um try to share whatever spiritual knowledge spiritual insight we have that's what we call preaching um not in a condescending way but the preaching that we do in this world uh, um, we we share whatever um uh, spiritual happiness we have received we share it with others we share our good fortune with others that is called preaching but this preaching doesn't exist in the spiritual world as we know it there is no preaching in the spiritual world because everyone is a pure devotee of krishna uh, when krishna comes here though when krishna manifests his past times on earth in the material world at that time there is preaching and there are several examples in of that in shrimad bhagavatam one example is the wives of the brahmanas who lived at the outskirts of vrindavan they were preached to by the gopis they heard from the gopis the, the uddha was sent from mathura to be preached in vrindavan he came to vrindavan institute of higher education vihe and he was preached by the gopis he was preached by radharani so preaching exists in the prakata leela when krishna manifests his past times in this world there is preaching but in the spiritual world in goloka vrindavan there is no preaching there is no need for it now the last part uh, of what you said um, anand bihari prabhu was uh, if there are no impediments in the spiritual world how can there be happiness now impediments do exist in the spiritual world there is no preaching but there are impediments in the spiritual world but these impediments are um spiritual and they exist only to increase the love for example radharani to meet muralidhar has to overcome the obstacles placed by jatila kutila abhimanyu uh, radharani has to overcome the obstacles placed by chandravali the rival gopis so this type of um these impediments these difficulties do exist in the spiritual world but they exist only to increase the eagerness of union only to increase the sweetness of union so there may be some separation in the spiritual world but that exists only to increase the sweetness of union which inevitably happens and predominantly there is union sometimes there is separation to increase the sweetness of the rasa of the spiritual relationships is that okay anand bihari prabhu did i address it was, it was very satisfying and spot on thank you adigadara prabhu uh bima prabhu he is in hospitality industry and he's wondering if he can book a stay in the spiritual world and what the prices and what the policies are no smoking i guess right no loss <laughs> no greed <laughs> tell him bima bima is on his he's packing up his uh, belongings shila <laughs> rupa goswami only price to pay to get this reservation is laulyam eagerness to get it 
all we need to have is desperate eagerness to get the spiritual world to get radha murli there and that is only price we should want it laulyam api mulyam ekalam rupa gosam is the only mulya only uh, only payment we have to make is laulyam sincere eagerness to get radha murli there that's all krishna doesn't demand anything else hare krishna that's so blessed bima prabhu to have william in his life to uh, make his way into the spiritual world and bring us also with him okay any further questions dear devotees it's your turn shrimad bhagavatam is questions and answers so questions that's our service to adigadara prabhu he served in us by giving class and we're serving him by asking intelligent and pertinent questions hari purusha prabhu hari krishna did you marvel his class actually it seems like well it's a fact he's seeing what he's describing he's experiencing what he's describing he's part of the spiritual world there's no other explanation for, for how he he could be so delighted and so convincingly sharing what it's like there and responding to one of those interesting questions about uh you were asking about duality we know that there's not duality but there's variegatedness it's not just an amorphous blob of non-differentiated light but there's varieties of happiness varieties of enjoyment and that preaching has the connotation of talking down to someone but uh there's tremendous sharing of um people sharing the nectar that they're experiencing and they're seeing that each other is enjoying and of all the qualities of the spiritual world we're hearing a lot of def- of uh qualities about what it's like there uh the most profound quality is the fact that krishna's love is manifest to us that he's beautiful and the atmosphere is nice and the, and the uh, weather is nice and the flowers are blossoming but but they're all showing krishna their love and krishna's reciprocating and exhibiting his tremendous love for us there so here we don't we we forget that we 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 don't see that but there um it's revealed and krishna is opening the door by sending us somebody like adigadara prabhu to practically bring us there by his description in class it's it's amazing he invoked he actually says that says that in bhagavatam when the um lord is glorified the atmosphere of vrindavan is invoked the atmosphere of the spiritual world here is the conch shell speaking of the spiritual world 